Okay guys, so I'm going to do a couple of examples of the chain rule and this is finding the first derivative using what's called the chain rule. So you know that you have a chain rule when you have situations like this, for example. Um, y is equal to 3x minus 4 to the fifth power. So instead of just x to the fifth power, you see it, it's an expression of x to the fifth power. So Sometimes the chain rule is called the um, extended power rule. And the reason is because we're going to basically define this first derivative, do a big power rule, and then extend it into what we call the chain rule. So let me let that organize itself. Okay, so when I find the first derivative, here's my power rule, my general power rule. I'm going to bring the exponent down to the front. I'm going to keep the base the same, which in this case is 3x minus 4. I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent. And here's the extended part multiplied by the derivative of the base, which in this case, the derivative of 3x minus 4 is simply 3. And then I simplify. Okay, again, I bring the exponent to the front. I keep the base the same. I subtract 1 from the exponent, and I multiply by the derivative of the inside, and that's my extended power rule, also known as the chain rule here. So I get a 15 times the quantity, 3x minus 4 to the fourth, right? This 3 and this 5 can get multiplied because they're both outside of the parentheses. I can't distribute this in because that exponent is here, so this is my first derivative simplified for this case. Okay, let me do another example. Example 1, example 2. f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 raised to the 8th power. And I want the first derivative again, okay? First derivative, again, extended power rule. I'm going to take that exponent and bring it down. I'm going to maintain the base, 3x squared plus 5x minus 4. I'm going to subtract 1 from that exponent which becomes a 7, and here's the extended part. I multiply by the derivative of the base. The derivative of 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 is a 6x plus 5, okay? Again, bring the exponent down to the front. Keep the base. Subtract 1 from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the base. And then I simplify. Again, this 8 can be multiplied by this 6x plus 5. It depends on what your teacher wants. I'm going to keep it in factored form. And I cannot distribute anything here because I have an exponent of 7 on it. So I have an 8 times a 6x plus 5 times the quantity 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 to the 7th power, which I can't really do much else with. Okay, the extended power rule. So let me do another example. Um, let me do one with a radical sign. Let's do the square root of 6x plus 3. Okay, I want the first derivative. Now, before I find the first derivative, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite it as 6x plus 3 to the 1 half. Okay, remember that a radical sign, this is a radical sign, can be represented as an exponent. And the index of the radical sign is the denominator of the exponent. So saying the square root of this is the same thing as saying the base to the 1 half. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm bringing that 1 half to the front. I'm maintaining the base. I'm subtracting 1 from the exponent. This is a 1 half minus 1, right? And I'm multiplying by the derivative of the base. Bring the exponent to the front, maintain the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, and multiply the derivative by the derivative of the base. Now, this is 1 half minus 1 over 1 in this exponent here. And when you subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. So when I do 1 half minus 1, 1 half minus 2 halves, I get a negative 1 half. So my first derivative for this case is a 1 half times 6x plus 3 to the negative 1 half times 6. And when I simplify this, I can multiply the 1 half times the 6, because they're both outside of these exponent cases. 1 half times 6 is a 3. This negative exponent is applied to the 6x plus 3, so it goes to the bottom, 6x plus 3, <clears throat> to the positive 1 half. 
right? Six times one half is three, that stays on top, because this negative exponent only applies to the six x plus three, so that goes to the bottom, which means I can also represent this as three over the square root of six x plus three. Back in radical form. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more example, <clears throat> an application of the chain rule. Um, let's do g of x is equal to 5 over <clears throat> 3x squared plus 7 to the third power. So um, my numerator is just a constant, right? There's no expression of x. So I could potentially use the quotient rule if I want to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that denominator up, 3x squared plus 7. And when I do that, that becomes a negative 3 exponent, and then I'm going to apply the chain rule because it's a basic chain rule now. Now I'm going to take the first derivative, g prime of x. I bring the exponent to the front. Now because there's a 5 here already, that negative 3 brought to the front is going to get multiplied by that 5, giving me negative 15, right? Bring that negative 3 down. Maintain the base, 3x squared plus 7. Subtract 1 from the exponent, negative 3 minus 1, and multiply by the derivative of the base, which is just 6x. Bring that negative 3 to the front, it gets multiplied by that 5. Keep the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of the base. And then we simplify. Okay, this negative 15 can be multiplied by this 6x. <clears throat> and 15 times 6, 90. So I get a negative 90x times the quantity 3x squared plus 7. And this negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. So be careful with that when you have negative exponents. When you subtract 1, you go deeper into the negative realm. If I rewrite this without negative exponent, this negative 90x stays on top. Because this negative exponent only applies to this base, 3x squared plus 7. When I bring it down, that exponent becomes positive. And this is my first derivative. Okay, so this is again the chain rule, also known as the extended power rule, with a few basic examples. I'm going to do a couple more videos on um, the chain rule applied to the product rule and the quotient rule, and then also some trigonometric um, chain rules. So look for those videos also. Okay, bye.